Oh, that's better. Hello. I do exercises to keep fit, you know. It's good for slimming, too. Haggerty Haggerty tries to keep very fit. She does all sorts of exercises. I'll tell you about the race she once organized when she got everyone keeping fit. It all started one warm summer's morning. Haggerty Haggerty was in the garden doing some weeding when Mr. Jones, the postman, came up the garden path. Morning, Haggerty Haggerty. There's a parcel for you. Thank you, Mr. Jones, smiled Haggerty Haggerty. Broomstick fetched the scissors and Haggerty Haggerty opened the parcel. Inside the paper was a box, and inside the box was a pair of blue and white running shoes. Haggerty Haggerty tried them on at once and jogged round the table. There was a knock at the front door, and Farmer Giles came in. Morning all. The very man, said Haggerty Haggerty. I like the shoes, said Farmer Giles, noticing at once. Very jolly. My new trainer, said Haggerty Haggerty. Now, if you would like to slip off your shoes and step onto the scales, We'll see how heavy you are. Farmer Giles patted his tummy. There's no doubt about it, he said. I'm overweight. He stood on Haggerty Haggerty's scales. The needle shot round. He jumped off. No, don't look, he said. I'm much too heavy. So am I, said Haggerty Haggerty. And so is Black Cat. She gently squeezed Black Cat's round tummy. I'm not, said Broomstick. No, you're not, agreed Haggerty Haggerty. But you're the only one. Haggerty Haggerty explained to Farmer Giles that she was beginning a Keep Fit campaign. She was organising a cross-country race for all the village. The winner was to receive a special prize, which she would provide. Well, said Farmer Giles, stroking his chin, it looks as if I'll have to get a pair of those trainers and get jogging. He set off home. What a good sport he is, said Haggerty Haggerty, pleased. I'm going to put up posters about the race. Haggerty Haggerty got herself ready to jog to the village. Come along, Black Cat. You've got to jog too, she said. Broomstick carried the posters. On your marks, get set, go, he said, clicking Haggerty Haggerty's stopwatch. Haggerty Haggerty and Black Cat ran down the garden path and into the lane. Broomstick flew into the air. Well, I suppose the best thing for me to do is fly down to the village and wait for them, which is what he did. Broomstick waited for them outside the shop. When they arrived, he clicked the stopwatch. Ten minutes, twenty-five seconds, he said. Haggerty Haggerty sank panting to her knees. Black Cat lay puffing with his legs stretched out. Mrs Bates came out of the shop to see what was going on. Broomstick handed her a poster. A keep fit campaign, said Mrs Bates. What fun! And she went back inside the shop to pin the poster up. Broomstick flew to the church hall and pinned up the other poster. And because Haggerty Haggerty and Black Cat were so tired, he flew them home. Soon the whole village was in training. Mrs. Bates ran round and round the village green. Constable Short gave up his police car and jogged round his beat. And Farmer Giles did everything at the double and sprinted up and down the lane on his bicycle. As time went on, Haggerty Haggerty and Black Cat were able to run to the village shop and back without getting too puffed. And the time it took got shorter. Broomstick looked at all this activity with interest. The most important thing was that Haggerty Haggerty should win the race so that she could have the prize. It might be something delicious to eat, like sweets or a chocolate cake. Broomstick timed everyone with Haggerty Haggerty's stopwatch. It was clear that in comparison with everyone else, Haggerty Haggerty was slow. Broomstick decided to think of a winning race plan. The plan came to him on the morning of the race. There was a knock at the door. Broomstick opened it to find Mr. Jones, the postman, puffing on the doorstep. Parcel for Haggerty Haggerty, said Mr. Jones, bending his knees. Parcel, called Broomstick. Haggerty Haggerty was doing some exercises in the kitchen. Open it, will you, Broomstick? Broomstick undid the parcel and found a new pair of blue and white running shoes. It's some more trainers, he called. Oh, good, said Haggerty Haggerty. They're in time for the race. Broomstick's eyes lit up. Haggerty Haggerty was slow. So he, Broomstick, would make some fast shoes. This was his chance. Without waiting another moment, he fetched the book of spells. A running shoe recipe, please, book, he whispered. The book of spells opened at once, and Broomstick read, Running shoes recipe for will make the fastest feet in the world. Sprinkle the soles of the shoes to be magicked with chalk dust, 
and speak clearly the following rhyme. Spring sprong sprast, go very fast. Chalky sprodo brast, never come in last. Broomstick put the book of spells back behind the grandfather clock. Well, said Haggerty Haggerty coming in, as you're the only one not running, Broomstick, you're going to have to be starter and referee. A very responsible job, she said, and went upstairs. Quick as anything, Broomstick flew into the kitchen with the running shoes and sprinkled chalk dust on the bottom of each shoe. Then he spoke the rhyme carefully and clearly. Spring sprung sprast, go very fast. Chalky sprodo brast, never come in last. He flew into the living room and put the shoes back in the box on the table. Haggerty Haggerty came downstairs ready for the race. She was already wearing running shoes. She'll change into the new shoes for the race, Broomstick thought. It's time to go, she said and picked up the new running shoes. Broomstick flew Haggerty Haggerty and Black Cat to the village green. Haggerty Haggerty went straight to the village shop. The shoes came just in time, Haggerty Haggerty said. She handed them to Mrs Bates. Don't they look smart, said Mrs Bates, putting them on at once. Thank you. Broomstick noticed at once that Mrs Bates was wearing a pair of blue and white trainers, exactly like Haggerty Haggerty's. Oh no, he thought. We're ready to start, called Haggerty Haggerty. On your marks, get set, go, shouted Broomstick, clicking the stopwatch. At the word go, all the runners sprang into action and raced across the village green. All went well as the runners turned the corner into the lane, except for Mrs Bates. She ran straight into a garden and up the wall of a cottage. Haggerty Haggerty looked over her shoulder and saw Mrs Bates disappearing across the rooftop. They raced after Mrs. Bates as fast as they could go and caught sight of her running into the wood. Come on, Black Cat, after her, said Haggerty Haggerty. Broomstick flew across the sky. He found Haggerty Haggerty and Black Cat running through the trees. Mrs. Bates didn't seem able to steer at all. She was sprinting at great speed up one side of an oak tree and down the other. Help, she called, help, I can't stop. Broomstick whizzed to Haggerty Haggerty's side. Quick, he said, climb aboard. I magic the running shoes. Whatever for? For you, I wanted you to win. Oh, really, Broomstick. Broomstick flew into the air. Haggerty Haggerty and Black Cat held on tight. Mrs Bates was sprinting across Farmer Giles' bottom field and heading straight for the river. Hurry, Broomstick, hurry, shouted Haggerty Haggerty. Help, shouted Mrs Bates, help, I can't swim. There was a terrific splash as she ran into the river. Broomstick dived down. He and Haggerty Haggerty grabbed an arm each and pulled Mrs Bates out of the water. They flew back to the village green with Mrs Bates hanging below. Her legs were still running, so Broomstick held both her arms while Haggerty Haggerty clicked her fingers and said, Freezy easy, shoes are wheezy, stop your running. There was a green and orange flash and at last Mrs. Bates' legs stopped kicking. Broomstick lowered her to the ground, and Haggerty Haggerty undid the shoelaces and pulled the trainers off. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bates, said Broomstick. I didn't know the trainers were for you. But don't worry, Broomstick, gasped Mrs. Bates. It was quite an adventure. To the winning post, cried Haggerty Haggerty. Here they come. The runners came sprinting across the village green in the final dash for home. Constable Short was the winner. As he went past the finishing post, Broomstick clicked the stopwatch and gave a cheer. At the prize giving, Constable Short opened up the prize amid loud cheers. It was an exercise rowing boat. Just what I've always wanted, he said happily. Black Cat yawned a big yawn. He was looking forward to a long snooze on the hearth rug when they got home. And that's the end of the story. Smashing prize, wasn't it? No wonder Constable Short was pleased. He'll be able to keep fit rowing it. Well, that's my last Haggerty Haggerty story for now. I hope you've enjoyed them. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.